Many air shows are a joyful and festive occasion where the whole family can enjoy and celebrate the awesome majesty of human flight. Many parents bring their children to these fun-filled events, which are guaranteed by organizers to be good, clean, wholesome family entertainment. The pilots are transformed into performers and their aircraft become gleaming objects of art. Every year in North America alone, there are almost 500 air shows. These are attended by about 27 million spectators. This makes air shows second only to Major League Baseball as a spectator sport. Canadian towns and cities host about 70 air shows per year. The F-16, it's my favorite plane. It kicks ass. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, I don't know. It's just my favorite plane. I've always liked it. Yeah, it's fast, maneuverable, looks good. It's loud. <laughs> uh, my favorite part of the show so far today, I'd say the uh, Tomcat was pretty cool. Just because I've never seen one before here. Uh, like in years past, it's been other jets such as the MiG, like the MiG 29, psh, blew me away. But uh, yeah, this year the Tomcat, I mean, I just never seen one before. It was really cool to come out and see it. I like the F 16. Why? Power, the speed. Just all around a wicked jet. Because Stealth, Stealth is my favorite plane. Why? Um, well, it kind of looks like the alien ship and stuff. It's like, it's really fun. It's oh, cool. Yeah? It's what fast. Do you, what do you like about the planes? Um, well, some of them you can go in and some of them you can go in the cockpits. Like, I went into the cockpits and you could steer it and stuff. The whole idea of war, its economic causes, and its terrifying human consequences are, of course, completely missing. The result is a highly sanitized pageant of war. On display are the latest high-tech props, but they're divorced from the frightful reality of battle and the toll of human suffering. It is, after all, just a show, a pleasant facade to mask the horrors of war. Some of the most expensive and sophisticated weapons delivery systems ever created in the history of the planet are used to perform dramatic aerial stunts. It's a kind of flying circus flaunting the art of war. The audience is a great time viewing these theatrics, and there is a non-stop good mood patter filling the airwaves. It sounds like an AM radio station with its typical keep it light announcer acting as a sort of a masters of ceremony. Upbeat rock music plays in the background as the jets thunder past overhead. The pilots and their planes are the heroes of the performance. Their daring acts of bravado tantalize and amuse the crowd. After the show, they'll pose on the tarmac in front of their planes and sign autographs for their adoring fans. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Captain Lajil thanks you for your enthusiasm for the CF-18 Hornet demonstration. He hopes you enjoyed it as much as he enjoyed flying the aircraft for you today. And we try and keep it patriotic since we are a Canadian company. And we got the Canadian Hornet. It's got the Northern Lights and Maple Leaf on it. And lots of detail there on the back. This is my real job. That's what I really do. I work on the engines for these, so. Yes. Yes. Arenda engines in Toronto. Yes. Yeah. The CF-18 Hornet was one of the few Canadian warplanes at the National Capital Air Show. Canada used it in the war against Iraq. Always a friendly neighbor, Canada provided an escort service for U.S. bombers, enabling them to drop their weapons safely. The F-14 Tomcat's probably the most popular one we sell. Uh, usually the ones with animals on them tend to sell the best. Um, that's the Tomcat there, and everyone knows it from, from uh, Top Gun, the movie. It's, uh, the stealth fighter is probably the next most popular. Because it is difficult to pick up on a radar, the F-117 Fighting Falcon is called a stealth bomber. 
first used in the invasion of Panama, F-117s later spent almost 7,000 hours on bombing missions over Iraq. These eerie planes dropped more than 4.4 million pounds of bombs on Iraq during the most intense aerial bombardment in the history of warfare. The F-117 can carry 5,000 pounds of munitions, including laser-guided conventional bombs or two Mark 61 nuclear weapons. The other so-called stealth aircraft, the B-2 Spirit, never landed at the Ottawa Air Show, but did fly over the city at 2.2 billion US dollars each. That's over 3 billion Canadian dollars. The B-2 is the most expensive plane ever built. It was, in fact, considered too valuable to risk during the desert storm. The B-2 was developed during the Cold War to evade Soviet radar and better ca to carry out nuclear attack. It can travel up to 8,000 miles without refueling and can deliver up to 75,000 pounds of conventional or nuclear bombs. In 1997, the U.S. unveiled a special new nuclear bomb specifically designed for the B-2. By continually improving its nuclear arsenal, the U.S. is encouraging potential nuclear powers to ignore international treaties and develop their own nuclear weapons. The B-1 Lancer is a supersonic aircraft capable of intercontinental missions. It can fly thousands of miles without refueling. The B-1 can carry 84 500-pound bombs. It is also designed to carry either conventional or nuclear weapons. I heard one of the pilots over with this B-1, and he was telling these wonderful stories about this holds almost as many bombs as a B-52, but we don't have to strap them under the wings. We can carry them inside, so they're protected. That means that, you know, we can do this and that and the next thing with them. But not once was there any indication of what those bombs were for. <laughs> no indication. So anybody listening to this is going, yeah, okay, so this thing carries a lot of bombs. So what? There's a complete detachment from the reality. The A-10 Warthog has the largest airborne machine gun in existence. The ammunition which it fires is tipped with depleted uranium. The U.S. and the Allies dropped almost 3,000 tons of these armor-piercing bullets on Iraq. Using these radioactive projectiles killed two birds with one stone. They destroyed 1,400 Iraqi tanks and rid the U.S. and Britain of enormous quantities of unwanted radioactive waste left over from their nuclear weapons and reactors. The half-life of these highly toxic DU bullets is 4.5 billion years so they will continue to irradiate the Middle East for countless generations. The plane is that was actually built around this gun. It fires depleted uranium slugs, and it, the idea is the kinetic energy can just uh, rip through the armor plating of a tank. Increased number of leukemias, skin cancer, and other uh, Hodgkin's diseases in the southern part of Iraq, in the areas where it was affected by the uh, depleted uranium. 
I went to the hospital, and of course you see so many women, you know, amputated uh, hands, amputated chest, everything. The kids, they got leukemia because of the radiations of the bombing. So it wasn't like only at the war that they got hurt. It was the after effects of the war. The radiation that, you know, slowly, slowly killed them and uh, made them sick. Uh, yes, it is, but um, slightly radioactive, not really. Contrary to the Geneva Conventions, the bombing raids on Iraq hit many civilian targets. These Allied air attacks destroyed numerous water purification plants, power stations, and sewage treatment facilities. The destruction of this civil infrastructure led to widespread deadly diseases and epidemics. Added to this was the UN embargo on food and medicines. The result has been a biological war which has killed an estimated one and a half million Iraqi people. The hardest hit have been the children. The UN Food and Agricultural Agency estimates that some 1.2 million children have perished as a result of the war and sanctions. What's this, Ramsey? This looks like a crater from one of the famous Tomahawk cruise missiles that are so notoriously surgically accurate. Probably hit the checkout uh, counter at the supermarket, as they call it, a bunch of shops here. But there's absolutely no basis in law for bombing the city of Basra, the residential areas here for trying to destroy their water supply, their electricity, the telephone system, their means of communication, transportation. People are getting sick from the water. The kids are out of school. The hospitals are full of injured people. And the cemetery is filling up with dead people. <laughs> Saddam Hussein and I will never defend him but I am talking about the women and the children who are voiceless they cannot speak inside Iraq and even the Iraqis who are outside you know Iraq they are scared nobody would speak because they say we, we are refugees here and we don't want to offend anybody now who's going to speak then everybody's just gonna look after their own selves and nobody's gonna say enough is enough no. <laughs> Your family was hurt? Your father was hurt? Yes. Tell me, what, what happened to your father? Uh, his leg break, broken and his uh, hand and uh, all, all face. Uh, no face. No, his, uh, his lips and nose, uh, everything. Uh, his eyes. From the fire? <laughs> From the... From the fire and the... Where did the bomb hit? Here. Right there? And in that place. And back to you, back. Killed, uh, killed seven persons. Seven people? Uh, seven, okay. seven people killed. You know uh, the people? Uh, yes, my neighbor. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, Jarha, Shingul Jarha. Injured. Injured. Injured 18. 18 uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, my neighbor. All of them, my neighbor. Uh, more, most of them children and uh, women. Uh, uh, even uh, my family, uh, children and women, uh, be uh, very afraid. Uh, to this time, uh, all of them, they said, oh, airplane, uh, we are very afraid. You know, like this, this air show is not to like kill people. Because like, you're not, we're not, we're not here to, uh, 
We're just here to show like everything they made and all these people that, you know, put a lot of work into it and, and flying these things to everybody. Like, you see show. everybody, they're it's like, oh, like a, we're not like, going to go around and bomb people, you know? Like, it's either kill or be killed. Yeah. <laughs> Which would you choose, be killed? I'd kill someone if they were going to kill me. Like, <laughs> it's, we're not killing anybody here. This is better than sex. Put him in. Put him in. Get some. Get some. Many nose cones of U.S. and British aircraft sported elaborate decorations often with the lewd and degrading images of women. Nobody actually cares about what's happening to the 20 million people who are suffering in Iraq, and especially the women and children. And as a mother myself of three kids, I feel for the mothers of Iraq. I mean, whether we're Muslim or Christian or whatever, we are all humans, and we should support these people, and we should not let the suffering go on. I want everybody to hear it, because that's what they have to do. The mothers of Iraq, they have to hear this crying every day. So if you can't stand it for a few seconds, you can imagine what they're going through. Air show organizers had chosen the Mother's Day weekend for their event. This added to the many contradictions and ironies already present. Mother's Day was originally dedicated to the promotion of world peace. Well, today is Mother's Day, and I'm here at the uh, air show along with a lot of the other coalition to oppose the arms trade people, and we're talking to people about the origins of Mother's Day and how inappropriate it is to be celebrating weapons of mass destruction on Mother's Day of all days, although we don't think we should do that any day. And here beside me is my mother. Of course. There so tell me, why are you here? There would be no other place I would be other than this since, since this obnoxious thing is taking place. I have to be here. I have no choice. I'd much rather be doing something else in a peaceful place, but I have to be here. We're army cadets, so. Yeah, I'm <laughs> air cadet, so. so and and it, they yeah. just spoil, uh, How yeah. do they spoil the fun? Because, like, everybody wants to come here to have fun and, like, see everything, not see people, you know, protesting against everything. Okay, so you don't think they should be here today? No, they could, like, go somewhere else in their own time, you know? Okay. And uh, what do you think about coming to the air show on Mother's Day? Well, I took my mom here. She's somewhere over there. I'm letting her sleep. Okay. <laughs> okay. There you go, Mom. Air show organizers gave the coalition to oppose the arms trade permission to set up a booth inside the air show. Feeling a bit like they were entering a Roman Colosseum filled with the lions and gladiators, Coat set up a display inside the forum and distributed thousands of leaflets. The symbolism of Mother's Day at a family war show and the presence of so many bomber aircraft used in the war against Iraq led to the idea of displaying Iraqi children's art. Well, the top one on the left corner, it's, uh, it's a large crater, of some, it looks like a crater, it's a black hole with a lot of fault lines in it from probably f from uh, the stress of whatever made the impact. And there's, I believe <clears throat> some people in the picture, like some of the ch people in the picture are dead. Well, it looks like it because they're like on the ground, not really, holding shape, so. For most of us, we don't really think of war as being a threat because of where we live in Canada and everything, so. <clears throat> These are things like you see like on like Canada and this kind of thing as an honor. You don't see it as a threat. Do you ever see these planes and like think about war? Um, well, up there a bit, there was a booth and um, it was about kids who drew pictures of planes and tanks and stuff like that after the war. Okay. And when I saw pictures of the planes, I started and I thought about what the planes would be like in the war. And it was just a flashback kind of thing. What did you think? Um, I thought it, they, weren't very, they weren't as advanced as the stealth is right now and stuff like that. It was very... It was kind of weird because we saw there was good kid, there was kids that were really good at drawing, and we saw because 
a picture of an F-18, and we saw the F-18 today, and it was really different. And I, I thought that maybe that would be like the F-18 that looked like in the war. I like, I didn't, I don't agree with having children's paintings put up. Like, I think it's kind of like, did these children like agree with having their paintings shown up to like everybody seeing? You know, because it, it's you know it gets right down to them. You know, it it gets people right there, right? But I think it's kind of cruel because you know they come here to have fun, and then you know they go there, and it's like, well, you know, you're gonna lose a profit. It grabs too much attention. They're gonna be, have people ask them so much questions. They just want to like put it behind them. You know. I had a very happy life, uh, spoiled. You know, uh, my father uh, had a big company, so I was well off, and. Uh, what I remember from Iraq is the nice picnics we used to have, the nice food, the luscious trees. We used to sleep on, on, on the roof, you know, in Iraq they sleep on the roof and under the palm trees and the invitations of people like, you know, inviting each other, the generosity of the people, all that. I heard in the news, they were saying that, you know, they hit so-and-so spot, which is exactly where my family lives, you know. And I kept imagining, you know, they're all dead. They're all, like, cut to pieces for the next six months after the war. I didn't know what happened to them. So I kept praying to God, please, God, I mean, don't let them get hurt. After six months, I received a letter from my sister saying that, you know, they're okay. Nobody of my immediate family were dead, but that doesn't mean that other people did not get hurt. Now, I feel like, you know, God answered my prayer of not letting anybody get hurt. I have to do something for the ones who are continuously dying. When the Iraq war was on, we saw on TV the images of the smart bombs and all this sort of stuff, but n nothing of the human carnage underneath. And I, I think the pictures here are just, uh, will just exemplify what we need to think about when we encourage the arms race. Throughout the, the uh, assault on Iraq, uh, it was like a continuing commercial. 24 hours a day for weapon systems, for militarism, for U.S. heroism, for... America's military capabilities have never shown brighter. We take justifiable pride in knowing our work, our products, and yes, our vision enabled us to fulfill our global responsibilities with minimal losses. It is now up to another generation of visionaries to lead us forward. And these visionaries are in place today. Our society seems to be hooked on violence as entertainment. Our relationship to the vehicles of violence and war is one of an audience to a performance or spectators to a work of art. This relationship is constructed and perpetuated by a mass culture which includes everything from action films, violent video games and TV programs, to war toys and model aircraft building. Air shows are the mass cultural events which most blatantly celebrate violence by depicting warplanes as if they were a legitimate source of wholesome family entertainment. By glorifying and romanticizing such technology, air shows are part of a broader socialization process which aids in the militarization of our culture. Air shows are among the most important annual public marketing events for the armed forces, for military technology, 
their war fighting capabilities, and for war itself. When you get right down to it, selling war is just about like selling any other product that kills people. Like tobacco, for instance. Cigarette manufacturers aren't selling black lungs, cancer, and death. They're selling an affluent, youthful lifestyle. It's all done through clever association. At air shows, the acceptance of war is engineered. Associating advanced military technology with innocent childish emotions like fun, awe, wonder, excitement. And just as with cigarettes, it's much more effective if you can hook your victims when they're very young. It's a seemingly never ending cycle, but what goes around comes around. If we ignore our history, we will be condemned to repeat it again and again, as if we're trapped in some insane amusement park and the merchants of war are taking us for a horrible ride. It's time we stopped the ride and got off to start afresh, to recreate ourselves and our culture. There's so many families out here, people, you know, um, pulling their kids around and taking them up into the planes and things. And I think, you know, that we have to be reminded or we have to remember that, that there were families in Iraq and families in Lebanon and families, you know, all over the, the world that have been affected by by these kinds of uh, machines and, and that they're not, um, you know, they're not models that, you know, that they're climbing up into. These are, these are deadly, deadly uh, aircraft that, you know, that have devastated people's lives. The Persian Gulf War was truly a transformative moment. I really believe that for our generations. If I were going to sum it up, I would say, look, there's an entire generation of people who went through the Second World War and the First World War. There are great-grandfathers and some of our grandfathers. Some of them are, are very old now. There's another generation for whom the Vietnam War was a defining moment. And we still remember the Vietnam War. I would say that your generation, which is my generation, and everyone younger than us, anyone who is mid-30s and younger, the Persian Gulf War was a defining moment. Now, the Vietnam War is remembered. People talk about it, they argue about it. Who's remembering the Persian Gulf War? Well, the fact that they're not remembering doesn't mean it wasn't important, but it says a huge thing. What is our generation remembering or actively choosing to forget? And we're helping them to remember. And we're helping them to remember that. And that's the least that we can do. And yet here we go through garbage-laden streets with cesspools all around because sewage systems are percolating up because they've been crushed by bombing and corroded out and the children are playing. That's the salvation of life, the children playing. The children cannot not play, even when you're killing them. Never fear, they won't stop. Countries know where to shop. Never fear, they won't stop. Each country knows where to shop. Lullaby and beware, though the cover is bare, just the same as before. There'll be money for war. Go to sleep, boys and girls, as each flag unfurls. Go to Baby, families ought to know that's where to go. Baby, Mother's Day, that's the day we'll come to see. War machines and the scenes those Iraqi kids are painting. They know what the missiles are all for. Baby, they show all the damage and the gore. Baby, it's 
not quite as good as making war, baby. But the war shows fun on Mother's Day. Ba -dum -ba.